Hello, I'm Nick Schultz with The American Magazine, the magazine of the American Enterprise Institute. I'm pleased today to has, have as a special guest uh, Indiana Governor Mitch Daniels. Governor Daniels, thank you for joining us. Hi, Nick. Us. Um, I know a lot of people would want to hear uh, if you're going to run for president, but I'm not going to ask you about that. Um, it's a good start. Uh, instead, I want to talk to you about your governing philosophy. And uh, we are a public policy institute, so I want to ask you about your approach to public policy. Uh, in an essay in the Wall Street Journal recently, you described events of the past year and said, quote, the nation is not safe from crony capitalism. What did you mean by that, and what can be done about it? I didn't, I didn't mean anything more complicated than the fact that the federal government, in a very sudden way, has become much more involved, uh, not merely in regulating or trying to steer the activities of the private sector, but actually owning, managing, and um, controlling them uh, directly. Uh, in a rather breathtaking succession of events. Uh, they uh, took over large segments of the banking, housing, automobile uh, industries, and um, moved on to things like student loans and so forth. Now healthcare, uh, in almost as intrusive a way. And um, uh, you know, this is always to be deeply uh, suspected, not just as a matter of um, economic progress and and growth. Um, the government is notorious for making uh, political as opposed to job creating and wealth creating uh, economically rational decisions. But it, there's also a lot of injustice that comes with it. You know, Dr. Friedman taught us a long time ago that the, the time to worry about big business is when it gets in cahoots with big government. And we've seen that in the last year in a way that we really had not, uh, I don't think, in American history. And, and you in, in Indiana push back against this, right? Or at least in a, the bondholders. In a tiny way. Um, simply trying to defend the rule of law, which ultimately was successful. But um, it, people are human. And to, uh, to give uh, people in, uh, in government the sort of power that, that they, uh, at least for the moment, have in some of these businesses, is to, it's to ask too much that they would not uh, substitute politics for good business judgment or the or the kind of choices that um, people operating under conditions of economic freedom would make. The uh, cap and trade uh, legislation and carbon regulation are, are, are much in the news again, and there's activity here in Washington uh, on that front. Um, but you've described the current legislative push for cap and trade as a way to regulate carbon as a kind of imperialism. Uh, it sounds like strong stuff, but I want to give you a chance to explain what did you mean by that uh, exactly, and if. If you're not in favor of cap and trade, are you in favor of, say, carbon taxes or some other way to deal with, with carbon regulation? Uh, the, the reference to imperialism was a reference to the differential way that at least the, some of the initial schemes would have fallen on our state. Massive cross-subsidy raised the um, cost of utility bills, uh, maybe double them in a state like Indiana, raised the cost of doing business, driving jobs out of our state, probably offshore. Um, while uh, leaving either untouched or even subsidized places like, uh, well, California and elsewhere. So it was massively unfair. And um, I tried to raise a dissent on behalf of the workers and the, and the uh, rate payers of our state. Um, you know, the, the, the whole notion here of carbon dioxide regulation um, uh, seems to me um, requires a huge burden of proof be carried before we do this. It is going to cost jobs. It is going to impose enormous costs on an economy that's staggering now. And we need to have irrefutable proof, not only that the problem is real, which not everybody buys, but that this mechanism would work. And I don't even reach the question of the science. I'm not, I don't know. I read, I read everything on both sides. Um, I don't have to reach that question because what I do know is that the cap and trade mechanism on its own computer models won't move the world thermometer. And, and so to uh, punish, uh, I think, perhaps fatally the American economy for no good upside just doesn't make any sense. The, um, uh, you've been, uh, uh, been critical of the nation's overall level of spending, that uh, the country is, that Washington is spending too much. Uh, I'm wondering if you could outline some areas where you think Washington could be spending a lot less if we're going to get uh, the spending problem under control. As it'd, you see it. it'd be easier to work the question from the other end, you know, because there's very few things, if any, that 
I don't believe um, should be l limited or, or curtailed in well, terms of federal spending. What would, what would spending. be some of the, some of the biggest yeah. uh, you know, Well, we all, items. we all know yeah. that, that the entitlement programs of today, the welfare programs, uh, um, um, are hopelessly um, uh, unaffordable. And this doesn't mean they weren't good ideas at the outset. doesn't mean that they haven't been enormously helpful to a lot of people. Of course they have. But when you can't afford them anymore, you have to face up to that. And it is, I think, um, this is not just some accountant's issue. To me, this is a, a, a republic-threatening issue in our country. It, I say to folks all the time, we can have our disagreements in the next room about how large or small government should be, what it should be involved with or not. Can we just agree this is arithmetic? We can't, you cannot keep a country or a company or a family going uh, with these levels of debt that we're headed straight for. And uh, everything really will have to be on the table in terms of, in my opinion, in terms of uh, what, where the federal government spends its money today. We all know a huge percentage of it is not productive or absolutely necessary. But you'll have to start with the major entitlement programs, in my opinion, bifurcate them say to folks presently benefiting or going to be in the next few years, a deal's a deal, nothing changes. But say to the younger people who are paying all the bills and going to pay for all these commitments, we're going to have to have a new compact that protects you in your old age, but it's going to have to be a little different than the one that has been on offer. Um, you were uh, speaking at uh, AEI recently about health care. Um, and I want to give you an opportunity to, to give us your impression. Obviously, the health care reform that's passed is playing out now. It'll be a number of years uh, uh, time over which it comes into effect. Um, tell me what you think President Obama got right about health care reform and what he got wrong. I just think it was a huge lost opportunity. He was right uh, to say that the status quo in health care is not working and it's not acceptable. And uh, and, and I think to move it to the front uh, of the American agenda was, was good. I just am uh, uh, really um, so sad that in, instead of reform, whatever that thing should be called, it's not reform. It did not reform anything. It, c it kept the form of American health care that we have, employer-based, paying for volume. Uh, uh, the more you do, you, uh, the, the more you make as opposed to the better off the patient is, the more you make. And maybe, and most of all, the, the, the third party pay, payment system, which keeps people from acting like savvy, smart consumers, the way they do in every other walk of life. And there was a huge uh, opportunity, I think, to move to a system that respects the individual's autonomy, the ability to make one's own health care decisions, and uh, thereby put some consumerism back in the process. And we missed it. And instead, the things that make healthcare too expensive today are only going to get bigger and worse. And uh, uh, but now we have to make the best of it. Well, that's all we have time for. Uh, Governor Daniels, want to thank you for joining us. You can see Governor Daniels' speech at AEI at our website www.aei.org. For the American Magazine, I'm Nick Schultz.